Are you a sniper? G'day folks, Jason from the Outer Farm here. We're actually on the Outer Farm property this morning. What we're going to be doing is rolling out this fodder I've got on top of the bucket, that way the cows aren't getting to it, down in the paddock where the, where the ground itself is pretty well bare. It's probably been, well not has been, it has been overgrazed. And you can see patches of soil through it. So we want to put that down the arm of the ground, get some animal impacts, some manure, some urine on it, and they'll probably trample and leave 30% and hopefully eat the other 60%. My job's about to get so much harder. You can see the livestock slowly approaching. Makes it that much more difficult when you're trying to work with a hay and they're trying to eat it at the same time. Nice hair piece. Good camouflage. Before I get too gun ho, I'll show you the ground that I'm putting on and the reason why I want to cover it. You can see through here, it's very thin, sparse. A lot of that's bare dirt. That would only be an inch off the ground because it's been overgrazed. This is on the continual graze property at the farm. Come through here. All those brown spots you see, 
bare dirt. There's not much coverage on this area at all, hence why I want to armour it. We're expecting rain either today or next week. main reasons why I'm also rolling it out. The forage now in winter time isn't growing, it's sort of at a dormant stage and the cows are going through and chewing it down. And what I'm trying to do is feed this fodder out to make the winter pasture last longer. So it's a food source for these livestock. Like I mentioned, this is a bare bit of dirt. I shouldn't say bare, there is a bit of forage over it, but it's only an inch tall, a lot of it's cooch, so very hard to get decent fodder when it's cooch. It's very sporadic. So what I'm doing is armoring the soil. So when it does rain, because it's so bare and sparse, I showed you, there's a lot of soil amongst the grass exposed, when it rains, the sun comes down and draws that moisture out of the ground. There's no armour or no thatch layer like you see in the videos on the trial property where I've been regenerative farming and laying that carbon down for four years. I've got probably an inch or two thatch layer decaying plus the fresh lot laid over every 40 days. So there's a constant supply of thatch layer. This has nothing. So what I'm doing is artificially making this thatch layer with the armour from this fodder that I'm laying out. What I'm also doing is spreading the seed from this barley straw across the ground. So I'm adding diversity to the ground. So not only have I got that thatch layer to hold the moisture in longer, which will help germinate these seeds. Once the rain comes, it'll push the seed through the ground and cover those seeds up with the armour and it has a chance to germinate. But not only that, these cows, when they eat this forage, they're then going to defecate and pass manure out on the ground. That is giving fertility back into the ground. If that lands on top of some seeds, that moisture and fertility in the cow manure is going to last a lot longer than if it wasn't on the manure at all. I can't really rely on the, the manure from this feed to germinate the seeds here. Only when, I mentioned before, when that manure drops through, it's gonna also stop the sun pulling the moisture out. And if it does to land on some seeds, that's helpful, because that's adding that extra manure and fertilizer, like I was saying. But this fodder they're chewing now, it's gonna take up to six days for that seed to come past through the rumen of the animals go through those four stomachs and be landed in the pasture. So it's highly unlikely it's going to land back here. It's through the rest of my paddock that this manure is going to be distributed across the ground. And what that does is add that diversity, adds that barley through the rest of my property. That's the advantage of having various types of fodder. Every season I try and get different fodder, roads grass, barley, barley straw, different types of fodder. That way eventually the diversity will be vast and varying through the property. As they say, the proof's in the pudding and the devil's in the detail. This is an area I did probably a month and a half ago now. Exact same thing. I'll bring you in, I'll give you a closer look. Check out all the barley straw starting to come up. The manure distribution all the way through here and all this green stuff is fresh barley straw. I'll pull one out. If I can get the seed. 
Well, you just gotta take my word for it. There we go. There's one there. Right on the end of that, you can see the straw, or should I say the seed, and it's germinated. So all across here, is that manure distribution adding that fertility, and you've also got a mass amount of seed. That's quite a big bit there. Must have been a heap in that handful. And what I did for comparison, is that's the middle. There's probably, I'd say, five, six foot diameter in the middle, which I didn't put any fodder over at all, just to show you guys what it was like when I started. Same as the area I just put through. Check out the amount of, amount of mud, or should I say soil at the moment. It's actually wet soil, so that's why I call it mud, but it's actually soil. Through those sparse bits of greenery there. There's, like I said, there's not much on this ground at all. And that's what it was like all the way around when I rolled that hay out a month or two ago now. So there is one downfall with that area which is now starting to germinate. Because this is on the continual graze property and not on the trial property where I sell graze through, those cows can come back at any point and start chewing those shoots off. I notice they haven't, or they may have, but there doesn't seem to be fresh trampling through that fodder and opening it up. And I can't see any fresh manure. So I don't even think they've noticed germinated. When it gets to about a foot high, they're gonna go back and chew all that fresh fodder off because it hasn't had a chance for the, for the root system to take to the ground. I reckon I'm probably gonna lose 60-70% of those green shoots when the cows go back and start re-chewing re it. Eventually that won't be an issue. When we finish getting the timeless fencing system through here and we get the watering system which is in and our fence is up, our single hot wire, we'll start running our poly braids out and we can actually sell graze through here. So we're not bringing them back. With those maps I done for the watering system, I roughly estimated roughly between 45 to around that 60 day period before they come back into graze. And that will give that seed a chance to germinate and take. If I find that they're taking still too much of that plant out, I can dismiss that cell and get it the next time round, which would be roughly between that 90 to 120 days. And that's going to give it ample time for those roots to take. I'll have to head across now and reseed the bull's paddock and give them some fodder as well as top up. I'll be getting hungry. I'll notice them standing at the fence there looking at us when we dragged this over probably an hour ago. This looks like a better place than any. Pretty sporadic around here too. Areas of bare dirt with roads grass around it. We're spread around here I reckon. Don't know where these bulls are. Might be over the back of the hill here. The long term effect of building up your armour like I'm doing now, whether it's artificially or having it cell grazing, where the cows are lying it down for you, is you've got that thatch layer. That thatch layer breaks down, but not only that, this artificial layer or any thatch layer in cell grazing stops that velocity. The rain hits the top of that fodder or thatch you've got down and stops the velocity of the rain and then it flows through, so you're not getting compaction of the soil. With compaction, it's hard for anything to grow. The soil just compacts harder and harder. You can't, the plants struggle to push through a hard layer or whether it be clay or soil compaction doesn't allow the roots to penetrate through the soil with ease. By building up soil or fresh soil or thatch as it's decaying down, you're building fresh soil. It's like a sponge. The water can now 
hold into that fresh soil like a sponge until you till the plants require it and then pull it from the soil and use it. By laying this carbon down and building the topsoil up, what you're doing is inadvertently you're controlling erosion on your property. You're slowing the flow. The moisture has been is has hit the top of this ground and seeped through. It hasn't hit with great velocity causing compaction and with compaction like you see in my erosion videos and erosion control videos the water just rips down the hill because it's that compact it gets a run up as you're building fresh topsoil you're holding the moisture in longer the thatch it hasn't got a chance to run or race velocity you're actually and then what that does is the root system of the plants because it's soft soil and it's moist it then the roots be able to penetrate through and as the root system every year dies off and the plants come to seed that organic matter is built in the soil the seeds sorry the the um, some of the roots break off that plant and turn into organic matter micro causing micro holes in in the soil that organic matter when it breaks down then allows the water to go through and fill those voids so you're holding the moisture or the rain and it's not just running off the surface so you crawl it you're also controlling erosion We've got three or four of these hay style feeders across the property now, which we haven't used since we started the regenerative farming process. The reason being, when I was laying that mulch out there before, it's just distributing the seed bank across the whole surface of the soil. When you feed it in these, the seed falls through, yes it does, You've got cows standing around, they eat the hay and they go distribute that seed through the property. But you're not building a thatch layer. When you're putting it on the ground and have it to decay into the ground, you're getting a wide diverse of seed mix across more of an area, which is germinating. Also, yeah, this is doing the totally opposite. You're not building that soil. When we're feeding out of these hay feeders, you'd have tracks around where the constant, where the cows would be walking all the time. There's some here now, I'll show you. So we haven't had hay in these for years now, but the cows have got a tendency, because they know you used to feed out of them, is walk around them. And it's going back to bare soil. You can see all these tracks all the way around. Bare soil. The only seed distribution you have on these is underneath. But if we have a close look underneath, that seed can't germinate because it's not getting sunlight. If I put you through there, through those weeds, you've got dead ground. There's nothing regenerative about that. I move this rack now, that sun comes out, it's going to kill that ground. And the first thing that's going to come up is Mother Nature's going to throw weeds like it has all the way across there because it's easy for her to throw a weed than it is to throw pasture. And it'll throw weeds that sort those soil, soil conditions. To me, it's not wasted what they're leaving. I'm investing in my future. I'm virtually spreading, a, distributing a seed bank for germination and adding diversity to my pasture, whilst also building back topsoil to hold moisture in. But anyway, guys, I've got electric fence, the spring gate to install, so have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon and awesome evening guys.